my existence through time and my privilege of being able to be myself through time is an important artifact for culture. I'm Marcel Alcala. I'm an artist based in Los Angeles. I was born in Santa Ana, California. I prefer they, them, he, she, whatever it may be pronouns. I'm Mexican-American, dual citizen, uh, born and raised in Santa Ana, California, and spent my summers in a little pueblo in Mexico called uh, Huejucar, Jalisco. And that's where both of my parents were born. And they came and immigrated into the U.S. Um, in the 60s. My childhood was a very zesty one, I like to say. Um, I'm the youngest of four. Um, my brother is actually 20 years older than I am, and my mom, so my mom had me in her 40s. I grew up playing dress up, going to art museums, I remember when I was 13 years old, my brother um, took me to go to a John Waters exhibition. And I actually met John Waters and asked for his autograph at 13. My brother also would take me to exhibitions like Basquiat exhibition in Los Angeles. Um, and this was, yeah, I was really young, I was like 15. Um, and discovering those paintings really influenced me. I've always connected to the idea of queerness as like a broad term for my experience. Um, because to be queer is to be othered and non-heteronormative. So, you know, we have our alphabet, but I definitely relate to like the queer identity. My mom always influenced me to, to kind of do whatever I wanted. Um, of course, when I told her that I wanted to be an artist, she was like, hell no. It, it, it isn't only until recently, now that I'm like having these exhibitions where she's like, okay, finally. But she's still like so scared. Growing up, I like to say between the border. I am Mexican citizen, I am an American citizen. I kind of lived two different lives. So in the US, I kind of wasn't like American enough. And then when I was in Mexico, I wasn't like Mexican enough. So there were like two different personas happening in each country, which I found super interesting. And I think that comes from queerness is adapting and being like an actor in a space in order to be what the area wanted you to be. I think the good thing about growing up in a Mexican household is that everyone's pretty susceptible to creativity because it's, I think like the Spanish and like the indigenous Aztec culture colliding um, created so much wealth in image making. Um, my brother was also a sandero, so I also connected like colors, symbols to objects and performance. I think what was like kind of trying to like take me back was living in Orange County, um, where in the like late 1990s and the early 2000s, there was this like obsession with the hills, you know, Juicy Couture, Hollister, like white America on the beach. I was influenced by this like weird Orange County whiteness, but also wanted to like bring in like that Latinidad, Mexican culture, but also like inspiration from art, from, you know, New York, Paris, um, and even Los Angeles. A big part of my coming out story um, was with my mother, who I'm the closest to. I told her that I was dating someone at the time, um, and she just started crying. It was really, it was touching, it was sad. I mean, you know, she was, I think like maybe in her 60s, so she had already like lived through like the 80s and the 90s, seeing a lot of people pass away. Um, at, the, at, at the time, I didn't really understand 
what her sentiment was, but she was just scared for me. It was complicated. I mean, obviously I'm glad I did it because our connection is so strong now. Um, but at the time, yeah, it was tough. And then I texted my, my brothers and my sisters um, that I was gay and they were just like, we don't care, cool. <laughs> so they took it more casually and my mom just was shook. My preferred medium of expression at the moment is definitely painting. Um, during the pandemic, I was by myself. Um, and through, you know, losing my job and getting um, aid through the government, I decided to reinvest in my own practice and, and start painting. Um, however, I come from a performance background used to make sculpture and used to make videos. So I think just depending on the exhibition, that's where my medium can change. But definitely currently I'm, I'm, I'm oil painting. I'm figuring it out. My work is always gonna come from like LGBTQ plus state because that's just who I am. I think the figures that I use, um, the people around me who I paint, are super influential to the practice. Um, the vibrant colors, um, the sort of gender non-conformity of the bodies in my work. When I moved from Chicago to Los Angeles, um, I started discovering like gay clubs and like gay bars and then performing myself um, as a clown drag queen um, called Bayasa. And through that, like, I gain even more knowledge into, into what I was making. Um, it isn't only till recently that I started painting. Painting is just a part of my life. I love mixing colors. Um, sometimes the turpentine smells like I'm gonna die, but knowing that it's gonna thin out that paint and create like a delicious layer, it's worth it. Um, gouache making, where I'm like pouring water and mixing in the pigment and putting dots onto the paper and it bleeding into the paper. I feel like I get this visceral feeling of like, it's almost like tattooing um, earth. Creating these paintings is almost like giving birth. You spend so much time working on them, creating light, and figuring light is like the most difficult thing for me at least, and creating this idea that encapsulates a story through an image. And then, you know, when someone purchases a work, you know, you get like this postpartum depression. But then it's, it's worth it at the end of the day because it's like they're 18 years old once they're finished and they have to move out of the house and create their own story. Those images are gonna exist in houses. People will grow up with those paintings and then they will be super influenced by the story. It's almost like creating a little marker or monolith to an idea that throughout the decades will always change its meaning but it'll be like an artifact of our current time. And that's why I make work, because I feel like my existence through time and my privilege of being able to be myself through time is an important artifact for culture. So motivation can obviously always be a struggle. I think taking time out of my schedule to go walking in nature, going for hikes, swimming in the ocean, making sure that I'm connected to earth, doing hot yoga, trying my best to work out. Those are super helpful moments. And always to know that even if you make, it's okay to make a terrible work because through that you're learning about your practice and you'll achieve this moment in another work that may be spectacular. And that's the struggle that I always have is I want everything to be perfect, but it's okay not to be perfect. What I would tell my younger self, keep going and reach for the stars because it's all gonna work out. And even when the struggle is difficult, 
it's worth it in the end because life isn't pure joy. There are ups and there are downs. Don't expect life to be perfect, but strive for perfection. And advice that I would give the younger generation, I would say, you know, you're living in the best time to be a queer person. So just keep doing you and be your authentic self and keep slaying and kill it.